Since the end of the 18th century, Western education has become the bedrock of an ideal society and the dominant way to build human capital. From the primary stage to the tertiary level, formal Western education is a key part of the human capital development process that drives economic growth and development. Thus, it has been adopted and adapted by most countries. Formal Western education in Nigeria dates back to 1843, when Christian missionaries founded the first primary school in Badagri. Today, Nigeria operates a 934 basic education curriculum, in which primary school education takes up the first six of the initial nine-year stage. Primary school education is the foundation of individual and national development. It is the base on which the capacity of future economic productivity is built. It is also a vital component of the socialization structure that teaches children the socially acceptable norms, beliefs, values, and behaviors they are expected to align with for successful integration into society. Essentially, children who are deprived of quality primary education risk having a damaged foundation that exposes them to the likelihood of lifelong technical and social incompetence that hampers their chances of achieving adequate integration into the family, workplace, and society as a whole. Consequently, they become a burden to society, which then pays a high social and economic cost. This picture is made grimmer in Nigeria because the country has the highest number of out-of-school children in the world. According to UNICEF data, about 20 million Nigerian children between the ages of 5 to 14 years old are classified as out-of-school. The situation becomes more worrying when data from the 2021 National Bureau of Statistics Multiple Indicator Cluster Survey is taken into account. Only 61% of 6 to 11-year-olds regularly attend primary school and a paltry 35.6% of children between the ages of 36 to 59 months receive early childhood education. A deeper dive into the problem of out-of-school children paints a revealing picture of stark regional disparities. Nigeria's north is home to troubling school attendance rates, with states like Bauchi, Bornu, Gombe, Sokoto, among others, with out-of-school rates that hover between 48 to 60 percent and early education enrollment rates in the 3 to 7 percent range. The out-of-school rates in the regions outside the North are much better, with one-digit percentage figures being the norm. This is no surprise considering the North's cultural resistance to formal primary school education traces back to the arrival of colonial administrators and Christian missionaries in the region, with the people inferring that adoption of Western education would lead to their conversion to Christianity. As such, Western education was referred to in Hausa as Karatum Boko, which means fake education as opposed to Quranic and Islamic education, which was viewed as authentic. This led to the word Boko over time changing meaning from fake to Western education, as is evident in the nomenclature of the terrorist group Boko Haram. Little wonder the first schools in the North were established 55 years after their counterparts in the Southwest. The consequences of out-of-school children in the North are evident. The region has been paying the social price of a decade-long insurgency, with many school-aged children drafted into terrorist groups as foot soldiers. Also, the region is an economic underperformer and battles extreme poverty. This widespread poverty is often linked to poor education for the girl child, as UNICEF statistics estimate roughly 60% of female children in the North are out of school. This partly explains the prevalence of early child marriages, which cause rapid population growth that contributes to poverty. Away from the north, the southeast also has poor early enrollment rates of between 6 to 12 percent, with Anambra states having inferior figures with over 20 percent being out of school partly due to insecurity related to the activities of separatist groups. All told, the soared early enrollment figures across the country are a cause for concern because it suggests more Nigerian children do not begin the primary education process on time, not to say anything of the actual quality of the education on offer. Put together, what is the economic cost of having an out-of-school children problem this massive? A report from the Center for Study of Economies of Africa tried to find out 
by getting an estimate of the total earnings all the children in question would have likely received if they completed their basic education problems and then compare the results with an estimate of the total earnings that factor in the likely incomes earned by the out-of-school children that do not have a complete basic education program to identify the difference in outcomes. The report also considers the impact of gross domestic product and does all of these using macroeconomic and microeconomic approaches. It was discovered that adults who were out-of-school children could not contribute to the country's productivity in the long run. Consequently, Nigeria loses a whopping $40 billion, a figure which is roughly 7.83% of the country's gross domestic product of $432 billion and is larger than the combined GDPs of Chad, Mali, and Burkina Faso. Successive governments have made policy attempts to solve this problem. The Obasanjo administration launched the Universal Basic Education Program aimed at making universal primary, secondary, and adult education programs free and compulsory. But the program has met some setbacks. First is that its success is dependent on the country's local government's capacity as laid out by Decree No. 3 of 1991, which included the power to handle the recruitment and payment of teaching staff for the primary schools in their areas. Local governments, however, have not been adequately empowered for the roles they have been constitutionally given. They find themselves being sabotaged by a partner. The state government, intent on controlling resources constitutionally allocated to it without fulfilling the attendant's responsibility. This has greatly hampered the success of the Universal Basic Education Program. Another major setback is the lack of qualified personnel. The Universal Basic Education Commission has said that a personnel audit it conducted showed that Nigeria is short of 277,537 teachers for basic educational purposes. Media reports in 2019 stated how one school, Rimawa Primary School in Goronyo, Sokoto State, had only 10 teachers managing a pupil population of 1,170. This illustrates the issue in many states, especially in rural communities that rarely get spending priority. This problem will likely worsen with the increasing out-of-school children numbers. This is because there will be a further shrinking pool of competent hands that can be deployed as teachers, especially in the north, which has high numbers of these children. In a situation where there is infrastructure, but those available to teach are unable to impart knowledge because they also lack a basic educational foundation or aren't grounded in the subjects they are to teach, policy efforts will be undermined. On the part of the Buhari administration, it recently launched the Accelerated Basic Education Program to deal with the problem. The APEB is an abridged system aimed at providing an alternative education program for school-aged children who had their education disrupted or never even begun. It runs in an accelerated time frame that provides pathways to mainstreaming learners into relevant levels of schooling based on proper profiling. It runs under the control of the Nigerian Educational Research and Development Council in partnership with support from the European Union and Plan International Nigeria. Encouraged by the success of pilot phases in Yobe and Bornu states, the Ministry of Education has expressed its commitment to using policy frameworks and monitoring systems to ensure the success of the program's products. With the current statistics for out-of-school children, this program seems to have arrived late, but it is better late than never. Therefore, the ministry must live up to its commitment to ensuring that the millions of out-of-school children return to the classrooms they belong in. Anything short of this could spell disaster for all of us.